What's happening, guys? Today, we are talking about masking here in DaVinci Resolve. It's pretty easy, and specifically, we're going to take a look at an example of a masking transition that's going to look a little something like this. Creating a masking transition like this is really easy when you're out filming, and it's really easy to do here in Resolve, too. So let's jump in Resolve and check it out. All right, so jumping in DaVinci Resolve here, I've already got my clips in the timeline. And you can see I've got the first clip, which is the train passing, the second clip, which is going through the subway station, and then we end up in Times Square. So I've got my three clips on three different tracks, and whichever one is on the top track is gonna be the first clip that you see, and then that one's gonna wipe away and reveal whatever is below it. So you wanna order your clips on the tracks in like the order that you want them to appear. So I know that I want the train to be first. Now, when you're creating these masking transitions, you want to look for objects that wipe across the entire screen, kind of like this, right? It goes across the entire screen. If it's back here, it's not going to work out so good because, look, we got space up here, right, on the screen. But if I bring my hand closer and I wipe like that, we can use that edge as a place to start our mask and help blend together two shots. So if we look at my train footage here, I know I want to make a transition. I could use any one of these things that comes all the way across the screen, but I want to use where the cars are separated. So right here where there's a, a gap between the two cars, this is the element that I'm going to use as my border to mask between my two clips. So once we put this mask in, it's going to go from the train and then it'll mask right down and then this will be revealed. And then we're going to create a mask in this clip and it's going to reveal Times Square. Now, just so you can see too, in my second clip here, we have the stairways. See how the stairway kind of makes this line coming across the entire frame. You want to make sure you've got something like that because that's going to make these kind of transitions look better and just easier to create. It doesn't have to be a hard straight line, although it's easier if it is, but it doesn't have to be. It can be any shape. You've got the ability to change the shape of your mask, which we're going to take a look at. So we're going to start with our first clip here. We're going to jump over into the color tab. So click on the color wheel down here. And just so you guys are looking at the same thing, I'm going to go to workspace and reset UI layout. If you do that too, you should be looking at the same thing that I'm looking at. Now I'm just going to close some windows here, close the gallery. Close the clips because I don't need that. So we are going to start working with this clip. The first thing we need to do is add an alpha out channel to our nodes. So if you just right click in this area and you come down to add alpha output, you see it's going to pop up a little blue icon for you. Now, in order to make our masking work, you're going to want to connect up the square from this node to here. And you can do it now, but I'm actually going to wait a little bit and do it uh, after we create the mask just so we can see the difference and I can see both sides of my clip while I'm working on it. The next thing that I like to do here is I like to create a new node uh, just so that it's on its own node. You can use the first node, it doesn't really matter. I just feel like creating the second one. So next you wanna come down to your power windows, which is this icon right here. Go ahead and click on your power windows. And scrolling down, I'm gonna use this guy right here. We're gonna use the pen tool to create our power window. And while we're right here with the pen tool, you can go ahead and click on this guy so it inverts our mask. And you're gonna see why we did that in a minute here once we draw our mask. Now coming back up to our clip area up here where we see our clip, you can zoom in and out using your mouse wheel. You can push and hold your mouse wheel to pan around. But what I wanna do now is find the point where I want to start creating that transition or have that transition happen so that I can start building my mask. So I'm gonna scooch ahead here and right here. So right here is the line that I wanna use that as that last car goes by, we're gonna reveal the clip that's underneath it. So I'm gonna back my clip up so I can use my arrow keys here to back up the clip. So that section or that line that comes across the screen is just before uh, our frame right here. Next, I'm gonna zoom out a little, and now I'm gonna just draw a mask with my pen tool. So I'm gonna start here, come down, and you wanna draw a mask that's gonna cover the whole frame. So I'll just draw it nice and big here, and we can always add points later if we need to. And then you're gonna click on where you started to close the mask. So now what we're gonna do is essentially have this move across the screen with that line on the train that's gonna help mask out the clip. And we're gonna have to keyframe that so that it moves as the footage moves and the train moves through the clip. So it sounds confusing, but really it's not that hard. So I'm gonna start with my mask over here and we wanna have our keyframes open right down here. So if you don't see them, click on this icon right here to open up your keyframes. And now since I'm on corrector number two, you see the little number two right here, right? The number two, we wanna come down and corrector number two right here, you wanna go ahead and click the keyframe right here. So go ahead and click that. Now that made a keyframe for us. So now all I'm gonna do is use my arrow keys and I'm gonna look at my clip and I'm gonna go through the clip 
and I'm gonna move this mask while I scroll through the clip frame by frame so that we can create a, a nice masking transition. Now, before we start setting all the keyframes for our power window, you might wanna feather the edge a little bit so that you don't have to go back every single frame and do it every single frame again. So you can come down here and use the softness settings here. You can do the inside or the outside. So let's just make this one say two. And we can see it kind of feathered that edge a little bit. And let's make this one one. There we go. That way it's feathered a little bit on each side. Now all we have to do is go ahead frame by frame using our arrow keys. And when we see the line that we want to start to mask come into frame, we're going to move our mask on top of it. So right now you can see, I still see this down here. And the reason is because we didn't connect up our, our output node here. So if I did this and connect it here, now you can see it gets rid of that clip right there. So you can do it either way. Whatever you like to do is fine. I like to kind of keep it off in this example, just so I can see what I'm doing a little bit better. So I'm going to go ahead frame by frame and I'm going to move my mask. And now you might say, well, it doesn't quite line up. Well, what you can do is just grab any one of your points here and just adjust them. So that way it lines up with the clip. And you can always add in extra points as well, just by clicking on the line and then dragging it around. You can, you know, make curves and things like that, depending on the shape of whatever the object is that's wiping across your screen. So you can make it fit right on that object pretty easily by just clicking and adding points. I'm going to undo that because I don't need this point. And then I'm going to go ahead, the next frame, slide it forward, make my adjustments. And I'm going to do this all the way through the clip. So now that we're just about at the end of the clip, I actually have one more frame right there. Boom. And now where we wanted our transition to mask away is already gone. So this is why you want to have this window to cover the entire uh, frame that we see here. So now let's go ahead and connect up our alpha output. So I'm going to click on this. I'm going to come back, hook it up. And if I go backwards on my clip, just use my arrow keys, you can see we've mas masked out that transition. So if I play through the clip here, this is what it looks like. All right, pretty good. So now that you've got that set, let's jump back into the edit tab so we can put our new clip underneath that we want to be revealed. Jumping back into edit. And now we have the passing train right here. So I'm going to come over here and let's see, where does our transition start? It's back here. And you can see since we feathered that edge, it does a nice job of kind of just blending or feathering the edge of our clip there. So I'm going to come right about there and I'm going to slide this clip in. And now as I play through, you just going frame by frame, we can see it wipes in. And then we're on the next clip. So let's just play through it fast and see how that looks. Now I can adjust where it makes that transition on this clip on the bottom. So if I don't like how it comes to the bright white wall, right, we can come ahead a little bit and maybe I just want to slide this clip back, right? So it comes to the darker area. So let's see how that looks. So maybe that's a little bit better. I don't know. I kind of like, I kind of like it going into the, the bright wall. So that's basically how you're going to create a mask where something's just wiping across the screen and revealing what's underneath it. So now we can take a look at how we're going to mask out this clip going through the subway station and reveal Times Square underneath. Before I show you how to mask out the second clip in this example, I want to take a minute to thank today's sponsor. And that is Motion Array. Motion Array is awesome. They've got a ton of great stuff on there. And actually all the footage we're using today comes from Motion Array. You can get stock video, motion graphics, you can get templates, text, you can get overlays. They have so much stuff on there that you can use to enhance your videos, to help you with thumbnails. They've got still images, they've got icons, they've got all kinds of stuff that you can use that level up your videos, level up your thumbnails, and help you just make better content here on YouTube or anywhere on social media. If you use the link in my description below, you're going to save 50 bucks. That's right, 50 bucks you're going to save on an annual subscription to Motion Array. And really, all these assets are just going to help you level up your video. They're going to save you time because you don't have to create all this stuff yourself and really just help you level up your video and audio game. So I've been using Motion Array for a long time. I love all the features that they have, and I think it's going to help you out too. So if you're interested, definitely hit up that link and check out Motion Array. And thank you, Motion Array, for sponsoring today's video. Back in Resolve here, we're going to create the second masking transition, and we're going to do it the same way we did the first one. I'm going to come here, select my clip in the Edit tab, jump over into the Color tab. I'm going to add in a new node because, like I said, I just like to add a new node in. I'm going to right-click, Add Alpha Output. I'm going to connect up my Alpha Out, make sure my node's selected. I'm going to come down to my Power Windows right here. I'm going to add in my Pen tool. I'm going to use the arrow keys to kind of move ahead a little bit to find where I want this transition to be. 
or where I want the masking to be. And I want it to be right here where this staircase is. I think that's going to work out pretty good. So I'm just going to draw in my mask. Kind of try and make it, you know, a similar angle to uh, what's there. I'll, I'll move it over in a minute here. Make it big enough so that it's hopefully going to cover the entire frame. Going to come back down here by my uh, pen tool, and I'm going to invert that mask. So see what I'm talking about here? You don't, you can't see this side. So maybe I want to be able to see that so I can just line things up a little bit better. That's where you would disconnect this alpha out. So you can just highlight the, uh, hover your mouse over there, highlight to blue, unclick. So let's say I want it to be like this. I'm going to adjust the angle a little bit. And then I'm going to move it off screen. I'm going to go back a few frames before that uh, staircase comes through. I'm going to come down to my keyframes. And since I'm on corrector two, I'm going to go ahead and hit the keyframe on corrector two. And now again, I'm just going to go frame by frame and I'm going to drag over my mask as the clip moves and that staircase moves across the clip. Now I can, again, feather the edge a little bit. So maybe I'll do that. I'm going to do uh, one there and uh, let's do one on each side. Kind of give it a little, little bit of a feather. And a little bonus tip here, if you hover over the word inside and out, you can just click, hold, and drag to adjust that uh, that feathering a little bit. You know, visually, you can watch it and see what it looks like. So a little bonus tip there. So I'll adjust that up a little bit. And now go ahead, just use my arrow keys over. And I'm just going to keep dragging over my power window to mask out this transition, to mask out this clip. And once we're done, again, you want it to be bigger than the entire frame that we're looking at here. So that way it, it masks everything out. So now that we got that, I'm just going to go ahead and connect my alpha out. This is a little blue guy right here. Connect that up and boom, goes away. So let's move our clip back and see how that looks. All right. Looks pretty good. All right. So now let's jump back into the edit tab and we're going to move our picture of Times Square underneath or our video of Times Square. So here's our transition. Let's see, where is it? So it's on this staircase right here. So I want to slide Times Square a little closer. And here we go. Now, if you created the transition and you decide, hey, I need to change it, something's a little off, just jump back into the Color tab and you can select the node that you have your power window on and you can just go back and adjust it. You can change the shape of it if you need to. You can add points to it. You can feather it. But you might have to go frame by frame again and make the adjustments on each frame so that way the keyframes get updated for every single frame that that transition or that power window is applied to. So if you like this transition masking video, maybe you want to check out some more videos up over here or maybe uh, one that YouTube recommends down there. With that said, guys, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Peace.